And let's go to Westwood. There's Tony Gonzalez and the Scarlets. They lost by a single point to the Cardinals last season, hoping to avoid that this year. First quarter, no score. Matt McCarrow rolls out, looks and finds John Fitzgerald, keeps his feet in for the score, and it's 7-0 Scarlets after one quarter of play. We move to the second quarter. Scarlett's driving again, and McCarrow loves the play fake. This time, he's going to find Fitzgerald in the back of the end zone. His second touchdown catch of the game, 15 yards for the score, and it's 14-0 Ridgefield Park. But Westwood would answer. This is Ryan Condon. He's going to roll out plenty of time. He'll find Tommy Page, 25-yard pass play, first down for the Cardinals. Later in the drive, Condon is going to take it himself. This is a five-yard touchdown run, two-point conversion good, and all of a sudden a 14-0 Scarlet lead is now 14-8. Scarlet's next possession, the ball at the 40, and here come some mistakes for the Scarlets. McCarroll under pressure, the ball is stripped. Who's gonna get it? Westwood would recover the fumble, a huge break for the Cardinals as Richfield Park continues to turn over the ball in 2009. On the ensuing drive, Comden pump fakes and then finds Alex Fox, 28 yards for the score, and just like that, it's 15-14 Cardinals at the end of the first half, third quarter, more trouble for the Scarlets. McCarrow in the shotgun looking, and he's going to find the other team. That's Corey Rooney. Takes it 38 yards down to the three-yard line. Sean Stevenson would punch it in from one yard out. It's 21-14 Cardinals. They've scored 21 unanswered points. Fourth quarter, Scarlets looking to answer back. McCarrow in the red zone and finds the big fella. 6-2, Lewis Jacob makes the catch in the back. Nine yards for the score. The third touchdown pass of the game for McCarrow. It's now 21-20. But the all-important extra point is blocked by Sean Stevenson. A huge block, and it remains a one-point lead for Westwood. On their next possession, Condon looking, and he's going to find Kevin Melly, who's going to end up with it. But he plays for the Scarlets, folks. That's an interception. Ridgefield Park alive and kicking. They have another chance to win. Can McCaro do what he did last week? Let's flash back. Last Friday night against Rutherford, with time expiring, the pass to John Fitzgerald to end the game as Ridgefield Park beat Rutherford 24-21. Can McCaro do it for the second week in a row? The handoff to Ryan Nelly. The ball is loose. Sean Stevenson recovers for Westwood. And that would do it as the Cardinals hold on to win this one. The final score, 21-20. Westwood coach Vito Campanelli hug, hug, hugging his quarterback after the game as Westwood goes on to win this one in dramatic fashion, 21-20. More action from the BCSL American. Fort Lee looking for their first win of the season, taking on Dumont. There's quarterback Ryan Ree, and there's Husky quarterback Daniel Byrd. Pick things up in the second quarter. Huskies with a 3-0 lead, but Fort Lee changes that. Tyler E. Felice runs it in from one yard out. It's 10-7 Fort Lee, but they would trail 13-10 at the half. Third quarter, Huskies with the ball at the 26. The handoff is fumbled. Fort Lee recovers. Huge break for the Bridgemen as they get the ball in great field position. On the next play, Tyler E. Felice will run it 15 yards down to the 12. He's a tremendous running back. Fort Lee with the ball in the red zone. On the next play, it's E. Felice again. He'll take it 13 yards to the post. His second touchdown of the game, and Fort Lee retakes the lead. It's now 17-13. Later in the third, Dubon on a punt. John Horanchik is going to return it, but watch this guy on the right-hand side of your screen. That's Frankie Gorris. He's just 155 pounds. He lays a smack right there on the Dumont defender. Horanchik takes it 39 yards down to the one, and that would set up Mystery Felice again. His third touchdown of the game, and Fort Lee's up 31-13. This game is over, or is it? Here comes Dumont right back. Robbie Leopold runs it in. And all of a sudden, a 31-13 game is now 31-19. Fourth quarter, now it's a six-point game. 31-25, and Bird goes on a passing clinic. 12-yard completion there for a Dumont first down. Next play, Bird again looks left. This one is complete for 11 yards. Another Dumont first down. This all happening with less than two minutes to play. Bird looks to his right. Finds Cullen, he gets out of bounds, but then he would run into some trouble. 
and the trouble would be John Horacek. Huge sack right there for Fort Lee, but Bird would pick himself up, dust himself off, and he's going to find Andrew Ross. 49 yards to the end zone, and ladies and gentlemen, a 31-13 lead is now a 31-31 tie. The extra point, we saw Ridgefield Park miss an extra point earlier on sports time, but Dumont, they've been watching sports time. They learned their lesson. They kick the extra point. It's 32-31. Fort Lee, one last chance. Fourth and 15. Nobody doesn't like Brian Reed. He's going to run 17 yards, picks up a first down. Fort Lee still has a chance, but they have to kick a 40-yard field goal. The snap is good. The kick is off the goal post. Dumont holds on to win. Final score, 32-31. A heartbreaking loss for Fort Lee as they drop to 0-3 on the season, while Dumont improves to 2-1. Dumont embarrassed in the first week of the season by Cliffside Park. They've now beaten Englewood, and they've beaten Fort Lee. So Dumont right back in the thick of things in the BCSL American. Speaking of Cliffside Park, they're on a roll. The Red Raiders, who hadn't won a regular season game in two seasons, have already won two in 2009 as they knock off Dwight Morrow, final score 42 to 14. So Cliffside Park now is two and one on the season. Chris DeLuca, their junior quarterback, threw for two touchdown passes. Joe Smith ran into for the Red Raiders, who are making some noise and turning some eyebrows in the BCSL American. And it really has been a tale of two seasons for Cliffside Park football. Last season, they went without a win. This season, they started off. 2-1. and one. They started off last season 0-3, and, and like I said before, they've had key wins against Dumont and Englewood. It's going to be exciting to see if the Red Raiders can make a run at the state playoffs. Let's check out action from the BCSL Olympic. The defending league champs, Hasbrook Heights, taking on Ridgefield, and this one would be all aviators. We pick things up on the second play of the game. This is a sign of things to come, folks. John Cambridge gets the handoff and takes it 26 yards for an aviator first down, all the way into Ridgefield Royal Territory. Wow. Later in the drive, more from Cambridge. This time he'll take it in from 15 yards out as Hasbrook Heights takes the early lead. It's 7-0, and the woes for Ridgefield would begin. This is an attempt at a halfback pass. Carlos Levein's pass is going to be picked by Michael Ruggiero, so Hasbrook Heights gets the ball back with good field position. Later in their drive, the handoff here to Matt Galassi, and Galassi's going to run it in for the touchdown. He's not even challenged, folks. It's 14-0 Aviators in the first quarter, and things would get even worse for Ridgefield. They try to fake a punt with a pass to no avail. Hasbrook Heights not having it, and this time it's going to be Kevin Condal who's going to take it in. That's three different Hasbrook Heights Aviators who score rushing touchdowns in the first quarter. It's 21-0. Second quarter now. More from the running game of the Aviators. It's Galassi again, and he's going to go all the way, folks. This is a 60-yard touchdown run, but hold the phone. A flag on the play, block in the back, so they have to do it all over again. And Galassi says, all right, no problem. I'll do it all over again, and I'll break a couple of tackles while I do it. Galassi still on his feet. He brings it in again for the second time. This one counts, and now it's 34-0. Hasbrook Heights, more trouble for Ridgefield. This is Ryan Carney looking, and he's going to find Michael Ruggiero. It's a pick six for the Aviators. This puts them up 48 to nothing as Hasbrook Heights has their way with Ridgefield. Final score is 48-14. Heights improves to 2-0 on the season. Ridgefield drops to 0-3, and, and for Hasbrook Heights, they look prime for another run at a BCSL Olympic title and even for a run at a state title at Giant Stadium. A big win for the Hasbrook Heights Aviators. Still much more to come here on Sports Time. We'll check in with girls soccer, Cliffside Park and Fort Lee, a marquee matchup in the BCSL American. Plus, can Cliffside Park boys soccer remain undefeated? Highlights of that coming up as well. But first, let's take a look at some of your touchdown pass leaders throughout Bergen County in football. As we go to break, you're watching Sports Time. 